safety and the salvation of a human being is contingent on the state of their heart and the focus in Islam is on the heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the day of judgment the day of resurrection Allah summarizes what really counts there Allah says يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونٌ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ on that day, nothing will avail a person or a human being. Nothing will benefit that person. Whether wealth, children, or any of the worldly posi- uh, possessions or titles, etc. Nothing, none of that will benefit the person. Except the only thing that will benefit the person is that the person comes back to Allah with a heart that is in good state, a heart that is healthy. And that means spiritually a healthy, pure heart. This is what counts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are all aware of the famous hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa collected by Imam Muslim and narrated by Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum In Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum Another narration In Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa ajsamikum walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa a'malikum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your physique your appearance and how you look like how beautiful how presentable how smartly dressed up you are, that's not where Allah looks. A meaning for how Allah holds you to account. It's this kind of vision. Rather, Allah looks at your hearts. When Allah holds you accountable, He looks at your hearts. And by extension, at your deeds. Because your deeds, Allah created humans uh, in such a way that their deeds, their external deeds are an extension of the state of their heart and of the actions of their heart. So the focus in Islam is the heart and actions without, external actions without a heart being in a good state, as many of the Muslim scholars indicated, specifically Ibn al-Qayyim spoke about that in a very strong kind of expression. He says uh, that external deeds without proper care of the heart is the state of the munafiqeen, of the hypocrites. Because they did outwardly everything a Muslim is expected to do. And the difference, the main difference between the munafiqeen and the mu'mineen, the believers, is essentially in the heart. So it's important for every Muslim to take care of their heart, to make the heart, their heart their focus in terms of care, attention, and making sure that their heart is in a good state all the time, that it's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the challenge arises from the the nature of this heart. The Prophet describes the nature of of this heart in the hadith collected by Ibn Majah in his Sunan. And the hadith was classified authentic by the scholars of hadith. From Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu, the Messenger says, مَثَلُ الْقَلْبِ مَثَلُ الْرِيشَةِ مَثَلُ الْقَلْبِ مَثَلُ الرِّيشَةِ تُقَلِّبُهَا الرِّيَاحُ بِفَلَا The example or the similitude of the heart is that of a feather. The heart is like a feather being blown by the wind. It is turned over by the wind. And this shows the nature of the heart which another hadith clarifies even further. The Prophet ﷺ says in this authentic hadith, القلوب بين إصبعين من أصابع الرحمن يقلبها كيف يشاء. That the hearts are between two of the figures of the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa taala, and Allah turns them over as He wishes. And when we say, when we talk about Allah and say as He wishes, this doesn't mean randomness. This doesn't mean randomness because what Allah wills and what Allah wishes is connected to his ultimate wisdom and infinite knowledge and his profound justice. But the point here is that the hearts 
keep turning over, keep switching. There's no stability to the heart. This is one of the biggest challenges. And this is something that we have to pay attention to. So you will find that your heart is not always in the same state. You'll find sometimes your heart is not responding positively to your attempts to be an obedient, submissive servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have to strive against this. You, there are challenges for you to maintain your heart. And this is why it becomes incumbent upon every Muslim to take special care of the heart. And we experience that not only in matters of faith, but even in emotional states. Sometimes you find yourself joyful and happy for no apparent reason. And then an hour later, you find yourself in a very negative emotional state, seemingly without an obvious reason. That's because the nature of the heart is that it keeps turning over. It keeps flipping over. And this is why the scholar said, إِنَّمَا سُمِّيَ الْقَلْبُ قَلْبًا لِشِدَّةِ تَقَلُّبِهِ That the heart is given the name قَلْب. It comes from the same root as turning over. That's, that's, the, that's the root of the word. Because it keeps turning, keeps changing. And thus maintenance of the heart is, an, is, a, is a continuous business. There is no way that you can just deal with your heart once and for all and get it over with. It doesn't work with the heart. It's a continuous struggle until the moment you leave this world. And this is why it was narrated لا راحة لمؤمن إلا بلقاء ربه that there is no rest there is no sense of relief for a believer until he or she meets their Lord that's when it's over before that there is no safety Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه it was narrated from him he says لا لا آمن مكر الله لا آمن مكر الله فَإِذَا وَضَعْتُ قَدَمًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ لَا آمَنْ حَتَّى أَضْعَ الْأُخْرَى أو كما قال رضي الله عنه He said, I do not feel safe. I do not feel safe. And I do not feel like in so much security and peace until, even if I put place one foot in Jannah, until I, pl I place the other foot. So meaning I'm completely in Jannah. Why? Not because he doesn't trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but because he does not trust his own weakness. He does not trust the fact that he truly deserves to enter paradise. And he knows that entering paradise is a matter of a blessing from Allah. It's a fadl. It's a, it's a complete gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one earns paradise as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that none of you will enter paradise by means of their deeds. Not even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself. It's a matter of Allah allowing people, giving, gifting them paradise. So, a believer should never feel safe about their faith. They're always questioning themselves. And that's why we, we, we can, this, this kind of understanding puts the statement of Umar al-Khattab in, in the correct context. That when he asks Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman who was named Amin al-Sirri Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he is the carrier of the secrets of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Umar al-Khattab when he was the Khalifa he approaches Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman and he says As'aluka billah a'addani Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min al-munafiqeen I ask you by Allah did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam include my name in the list of the hypocrites? Some Muslims get puzzled when they hear this. They say, Umar al-Khattab, like why is he having these doubts? Was he doubtful about himself? Was he doubtful about the mercy of Allah? Was, was he not aware that he was following the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It was none of that. But it was his profound understanding of human nature, that humans change. Humans change. And he does not, feel, does not have any guarantee about his steadfastness until the moment, moment of death. So he doesn't know. He doesn't know how he's going to end up. Not that he was doubting the religion that he was upon. He knew that he was following the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. But we humans don't have any guarantee. We do not have this self-control. Although some of us like to think that we have this kind of control. That we are able to control ourselves. And this is the meaning of the statement of some of the Salaf, some of the early generations. They said, مَنْ أَمِنَ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِهِ طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ سَلَبَهُ إِيَّهِ أَوْ مَنْ أَمِنَ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ إِيمَانِهِ طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ سَلَبَهُ إِيَّهِ It was attributed to some of the Tabi'een. 
That if a person feels safe and secure, that's it, guarantee that my heart is good. This might be the reason that Allah takes their iman away from them because it's a constant struggle and that's the test of this life. It is the test of this life. So Umar al-Khattab was concerned whether he would remain steadfast till the end of his life. That was his concern. And this is why he asked whether he was included in the list of the hypocrites. And that's Umar al-Khattab. So what about us? This is why a Muslim should never feel secure about who they are and how good they are. Because how good they are is a gift from Allah and it's not about them. Nonetheless, we still have to strive to do our best. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not do injustice, will ne never extend injustice to anyone. But it's a constant struggle that we have we all, we all, all the time, we have to make sure that we take care of our hearts. So your heart will be flipping and that's normal. So the second issue here is that some Muslims, they fear that one day they are enjoying their salah and they are present and they feel the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then the next salah or the following day, they don't feel it and they start questioning their iman. And they think maybe Allah is rejecting them. Or maybe there is something seriously wrong with their hearts that they start, they start giving up on themselves. No, that's the nature of human beings. It's natural to go through these ups and downs. But again, the more you strive and the more dedicated you are, the more sincere you are as you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your lows stop being very low. But you're always going to fluctuate. Your heart will always oscillate up and down, up and down. But you're, again, the down states will not be very down, too, too down. That's what happens and that's how you continuously improve. So it's normal. We should not give up on ourselves and we should not give up on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And worship is not dependent on how we feel about it. That only when I feel good about it, I'm going, and I enjoy it, I'm going to do it. If I don't enjoy it, oh, there's something wrong. That's not the right approach. Because we don't worship the feeling. We don't worship the state. We are the slaves of Allah. We belong to Allah. And our life and our existence is about devotion to Allah. So we worship Allah regardless of how we feel. And sometimes Allah takes away the good feeling in order to test whether we are worshipping Allah or worshipping the feeling itself. And that's how we take care of our hearts. You keep going no matter what. You keep making dua even when it doesn't seem to be answered. You keep making dua. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَعْجَلْ That Allah would answer your dua as long as you do not feel hasty. So he was asked, وَكَيْفَ يَعْجَلُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He said, يَقُولُ دَعَوْتُ وَدَعَوْتُ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لِي فَيَدَعُ الدُّعَاءُ The person, the, 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 the haste that the Prophet ﷺ is referring to is that a person says, I made dua, I made dua, it was not granted. Then the person gives up on dua. This is it. Because it doesn't seem to be answered according to our timetable, we think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not responding to our dua. The thing with the heart is that you have to remain steadfast. How Allah responds, when He responds, it's none of your business. We're not in a position to judge or dictate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. That's the relationship between Allah and His creation. He's the master, He's the judge. And we are the slaves. We don't, get, we don't have a say. The only thing that we can do and we are meant to do is to choose Allah all the time. And do what Allah wants all the time. Irrespective of how we feel. Or what we get from that. That's what submission is about. So as, as humans, we need to learn these things in order to manage our, manage our hearts well and keep them healthy. And we, know it's, we should know and keep in mind that it is normal for your heart to oscillate. It's normal for your heart to flip over, to feel high level of Iman at one level at another time. You don't feel it. 
And the Prophet ﷺ explained that in a hadith that we are going, inshallah, to talk about in the second part of this khutbah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفره الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الصحيح إن لكل عمل شرة ولكل شرة فترة فمن كانت فترته إلى سنتي فقد نجا ومن كانت فترته إلى غير ذلك فقد هلك The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم says in this authentic hadith that for every action there is a heightened period of excitement, drive, and will. So you find, you find yourself driven to do it. And for every period of excitement and, de- and determination and, and, and motivation, there will come a point where the motivation will go down, will subside. That follows from the nature of the heart. It keeps flipping and changing. It's impossible to have a steady state of Iman. It's impossible. That's not the nature of the heart. It keeps flipping. The point is, and you don't have that full control over it, so the point is that you keep going regardless. So the Prophet is saying, for every time or period of motivation that you feel motivated and drawn to action, there will be a moment where this will subside. So what should you do? Most people give up or some people give up on themselves, start questioning their faith and their iman. You shouldn't. That's going overboard. That's overdoing the process. That's trying to figure out what you don't have access to. That's trying to have a lot of control when you have to relinquish control and trust it. That trust that it is in the hands of Allah and Allah will take good care of you as long as you are sincere and honest in your pursuit of Allah. So the Prophet directs us to how we should behave in these times when our hearts do not respond so positively to our attempts to do good. When we don't feel like doing it. The Prophet is saying it's normal, it's okay. You should not arrive at serious conclusions that might be detrimental. The Prophet says, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ فَتْرَتُهُ إِلَى سُنَّةِ فَقَدْ نجا. Whoever, in the low time, they adhere to my sunnah. They hold on to the way of the Prophet ﷺ. You do the obligations. You do not fall in haram. You do not fall in innovation and bid'ah. You stick as much as possible. You do everything possible to remain steadfast, to remain obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever does this, then they have saved themselves. They're saved. They're safe. Regardless of the feelings of low. But whoever experiences this period of low time, they go to something other than the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, then this person will bring destruction upon, upon themselves. Like what? When they go through these low times, they start questioning their iman. They start questioning whether you know, they deserve the mercy of Allah and the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. So they start going into self-doubt. Or somebody else might say, you know, it doesn't work. Every, every time I get a sp- on a spiritual high, then I go down again. It's frustrating. So they start giving up on the whole pursuit of their faith and iman. Or they start questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah is merciful, why does He allow me to go through these times that are difficult and challenging? So they start giving up on Allah. Or they start seeking means that are not within the sunnah of the Prophet not within the boundaries of Islam. So they resort to some kind of innovated acts of worship. Things that we don't have from the Prophet and his companions. Some innovated acts, bid'ah. Why? In order to experience a high. Experience a high, that's it. So there is lack of submission here. I need to feel it. That's what they're saying. So even if it takes that I come up with something new or follow another order or system that ascribes to Islam but is not based on the 
Sunnah of the Prophet So we have practices like People singing as a form of worship People dancing as a form of worship People coming up with certain Fashions or modes of worship that were not established from the life of the example of the Prophet ﷺ or his companions. That's going overboard and that leads to destruction. So we just need to be careful. So it's a mixture of remaining dedicated and putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that as long as you are sincere, as long as you do your best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let you down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let go of you. He will take care of you. And you should not let your feelings of not being motivated or not feeling that your heart is being very responsive, don't let that delude you. Because it's, it goes even beyond that. It's the nature of the heart to fluctuate, to oscillate between states. But it's your obligation to remain sincere and devout, and do what you can, and choose Allah in every moment of your life. And if you stumble, you pick yourself up, and you choose Allah again. That's how life is, 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 is traveled. This is how you survive in life. It's not by being a perfect Muslim. It's not by being on a spiritual high all the time, and feeling a high level of Iman, and experiencing the sweetness of faith all the time. That's almost impossible. It's a minority among humans that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to reach that state. So it's normal to go up and down. And there's no reason to be frantic and freak out when this happens and start arriving at serious conclusions that might be detrimental to our faith and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in these times that we live when there's a lot of influence and the influence is magnified by means of technology, social media, and the hyper-connectedness, interconnectedness among humans, all of this influence really disturbs the inner states of, hu of humans and the heart. And the scholars have named excessive mixing with other humans as one of the things that corrupt the heart. Kathratul khulta. It is named as one of the things that corrupts the heart because it brings a lot of distraction. A lot of disturbance, disturbance to your heart. Sometimes you don't have the choice about this. Especially as we have necessary engagement and commitments in this life. So it's important to realize that your heart is not in your hands. It's in the hands of Allah. And this should come as good news. Because what Allah chooses for you is better when, than what you choose for yourself. Nonetheless, you still have to keep striving. And entrust your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that Allah will never extend any kind of injustice to you. You should trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this matter. So we ask Allah to help us keep our hearts steadfast. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu says in the hadith, and he, oh, he used to make this dua very, com, uh, very, very often, as Aisha radiallahu anha mentioned, that the Prophet sallallahu used to say, يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ وَالْأَبْصَارُ ثَبِّتْ قُلُوبَنَا عَلَى دِينِكَ وَثَبِّتْ قَلْبِي عَلَى دِينِكَ O oh Allah, you are the one who turns around the hearts and the sights. Make our hearts uh, steadfast. Make them firm upon your uh, way, upon your, the religion that you prescribed for humanity. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our hearts firm.